People always ask about uh, the man concept, and, and I just, I mean, if you start talking about what your concept is, then every song has to fit that concept. And that, to me, that's why a lot of records tend to sound exactly the same on every song. Our concept is just to play jazz, learn a hundred years of it, and then play whatever. And then about rehearsing, and, and then about writing original tunes. If we got some originals, great. But if we don't, find tunes that are good. I mean, it's always about good tunes. guy named Ben Sidron who had a television show and a radio show and he would interview musicians and one time he interviewed Art Blakey and he said if you had to describe jazz in one word what would it be and Art said the same word three times he said intensity 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 even on the ballads and that stuck with me when he said it and I heard it in my late 20s when jazz was at its most popular was when the music had that kind of intensity that people could relate to. And when it's at its least popular is when the strong points of the songs are these harmonic devices that lay people have no grasp of at all. So even if you have people who don't know what we're doing, they'll feel what we're doing. And from the first song, it was clear that that was just, it was just there. On the first day, it just started and it stayed for the entire day. And that was a, that was kind of cool, and it doesn't happen very often. together. So I mean the, the process is real natural. It feels very natural, very at home. You know, Bradford's always talked about you know, first, second takes. And, and you, you read that in, in jazz literature, you know, Monk was very uh, adamant about that. You know, you, you go in and you hit and if you don't get it on the first couple takes, then you know you just ass out. Yeah. We record the way they recorded 60 years ago. It's not Frank Sinatra comes in, they have an AR guy, goes and picks songs with the composers, with different composers. Frank shows up, does a rehearsal, learns his tunes. They go in and they sing 15, 20 tunes, and then the record company puts those tunes together and puts out an album. <clears throat> that was what it was. I mean, when you listen to those Miles Davis records like Nefertiti and Miles uh, Smiles and all that, they just brought those tunes in and played them. And never even played them on the road, and it's killing. That's, 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 I want to be like them. says hey let's do this then you know it's like there's an implicit trust I, I feel that it's like cool let's do that you know Joey changed the chord in, in one of the tunes today that, that I had and it was like it was totally like yeah because the song you know, is the most like, important thing well I mean I don't think there's ever been like you know oh no man I, I want this and you know the head butting things that, that shit just doesn't exist there we identify problems and we solve problems and Musically, we identify problems, and then Rivas will say, "Hey, man, let's try it this way," and then Joy will say, "But like one of the songs we that, that we did today that doesn't have a name, like you know, dak -a -dak -a, you know, we were playing it, and I said, "Yeah, just do an intro, just do an intro," and Joey says, 
No, I don't do an intro like a regular intro. Do something cool like six beats. Because I was thinking two bars. And Joey says, nah, man, don't do that. Everybody does that. Six beats. And he played six beats. And it completely hooks the song up. Yeah, that's a good one. Six beats. Good one. All right. and we did two versions and one was swinging and the other had a static drum beat. Static drum beat got thrown out in the middle of the song. It was like, okay, enough of that. It was one of those songs that sounded like it was a jazz radio tune. And I said, well, that's terrible. <laughs> Do one more with the swing. You should sound like everybody else with yeah. shit like that. That sounds that's basically sounds like jazz radio right there. That new jam by Ever Marcel. Anyway, moving along. Say that the tune on stage we may not have a tune and you know we'll take time out to, to figure out okay so hmm, what can I do to make this tune an actual song rather than a bunch of notes on a page and then the process of creating something beyond the page I've really never experienced that prior to me coming in this band and it, it's it, it's a humbling experience just because I was completely lost at some points and it was it, it really put in perspective the things that you know, I need to work on and the things that as a band, being as though I am now the new addition to the band, as a band, what, you know, they need to kind of help me with, in a sense. We just did it. Joey just wrote a great tune an hour and a half ago. <laughs> I mean, he's been talking to me, I got this tune, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. And we get here, he's like, I got it. So where is it? Oh, I haven't written it out yet. So he took a minute, you know, we took an hour break and he wrote his tune out and we played it. And we did it two times, and the second take was the hit. And we rehearsed it before. You know, so how long did we rehearse? Oh. Six hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how long it took you to write yeah, it. Huh? Exactly. I don't know, 15 minutes? You know, we took, we rehearsed, no, it was a little more longer than that, 45 minutes, and then we said, okay, we got the form, and then we played it. I mean, either you can play or you can't play. At the airport, it's the way we communicate. You know, right. on the telephone, it's the way we it's play together. It's more of a together. philosophy than a concept. You know, it's not like, you know, oh yeah, we're gonna do that. You know, it's, we all have tricks, I guess you could call them, or, you know, things that we fall back on. Or it's kind of like a, you know, conversation, a dialogue. <laughs> I think I met Justin when he was like 14. 
Where was the first gig in Texas? No, the first yeah. gig. Oh yeah, yeah, San Antonio when he was 16 years old. And he joined the band when he was 18. It's been a, it's been a fun two years. Yeah, it's been fun. I thank you, fellas. Don't let it go to your head. It's too, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> too late. Listen, 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 I'm humble. <laughs> <laughs> Miss the Hayti. I love this room. It's a great room. What I won't miss is uh, playing a beautiful ballad and having a truck rumble by, and then having to stop and start over, which was amazing. We didn't get it this time. Ragtown was done here, and Metamorphosum was done here. The duo record was. Done. Duo record was done here. There you go. My my record was done here too. This is our this is our last record here. This was actually the, the easiest for me. Rob Hunter, our engineer, made a, a change. Uh, we used to have the, the bass completely isolated and the drums partially isolated. But on this record, he switched it around and he isolated the drums completely and partially isolated the bass, which actually works better. So much like what we're doing, he's constantly developing his technique and working on stuff. And I gotta give a shout out to Roderick Ward too, the great beater man. The logistics man hooked our stuff up eloquently, you know. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I love all the songs we've done. I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite. I have favorite moments of songs, but yeah. but, but all the stuff is killing. It. It's all really good. No, everything's not gonna be on the record. You know, some of the things are gonna be bonus tracks. Joey wrote a ballad, I got a ballad, Revis has a ballad. The kid was writing a ballad, and he's like, I'll just wait. We were done.